Hamas has proven to be a lethal foe of Israel, but the most threatening regional militant group is Lebanon's Hezbollah. In contrast to the majority of Hezbollah's traditional weaponry, the group owns a vast rocket and missile arsenal, as well as drones, some of which are highly accurate. Welcome everyone in today's video. We're going to tell you Hezbollah's serious threat to Israel. With Israel at war with Hamas, the possibility of Hezbollah involvement looms enormous. The party of God's possession of a strong arsenal of precision-guided missiles, rockets, and drones is especially concerning. But before we proceed the further details, if you're new to this channel, remember go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe, so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. Brig. General Shachar Shohat, the former commander of the Israeli Air Force, has referred to PGMs as the Air Force of Terror Organizations, while Israeli military analyst Yalakov Lapin believes Hezbollah's PGMs are Israel's leading conventional security threat, surpassed only by Iran's nuclear program. Hezbollah's many smart weapons, while few in number compared to its entire arsenal, represent a severe threat to Israel's infrastructure and may even tempt Israel to wage a preemptive war. Hezbollah's Missile and Drone Arsenal Hezbollah has been regarded as the world's most heavily armed non-state actor, owing to its massive arsenal of long-range weapons. However, despite Hezbollah's huge arsenal, only a minor portion of it consists of PGMs. Despite Hezbollah's claims to the contrary, its precision project appears to have been largely ineffective, not least due to the deaths of Islamic Revolutionary Guard, Corps Quads, Force Leader Major General, Qasem Soleimani in 2020 and Quds Force Deputy Commander Brig. General Mohammad Hijazi the following year. Some estimates place the number of Hezbollah missiles and rockets at 130,000 and 150,000, but a more realistic estimate is about 70,000, with the majority being short-range rockets and missiles. According to Israeli estimates, only a few dozen Perhaps a hundred are precision missiles. Many of the party's missiles and rockets have originated from Iran, to a lesser extent, Syria, which has played an important role in developing Hezbollah's precision project, which aims to allow the group to manufacture its own missiles and transform unguided rockets into PGMs. The party claims to have mid-range missiles such as the Iranian Fate 110 and the Syrian M600 Tishreen variant, both of which have questionable accuracy and may even have longer-range Scud missiles, allowing Hezbollah to attack Israel from northern Lebanon. There have also been multiple claims from Saudi and Israeli sources that Hezbollah may have chemical weapons that could be put on rockets or missiles. The organization also owns a variety of anti-ship missiles, including the Russian Yakon cruise missile, which is the most advanced anti-ship missile on Earth. Last year, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah stated that all land and sea targets are within the range of Hezbollah. Hezbollah may also have up to 2,000 drones, many of which are domestically manufactured. In fact, Nasrallah advertised in 2022 that the group is willing to sell drones to foreign clients. The party has a mix of short, medium, and long-range drones. The payloads of Hezbollah's armed drones range from precision-guided bombs to unguided rocket-propelled grenades but they are typically far lighter than PGM payloads. In a battle, Hezbollah might launch an estimated 2,000 to 4,000 rockets and missiles each day, while the actual pace of firing may be greater. This would be important to its projected goal of deploying saturation tactics to defeat Israeli air defenses, especially since an all-out Hezbollah-Israeli battle would almost certainly be vast in scope. Because Hezbollah may only have a few hundred precision missiles and would face focused Israeli operations to destroy its launchers, it would most likely be unable to carry out an aggressive and long-term campaign of precision missile attacks, limiting the damage it could inflict over time. While the group's drone armament may allow it to undertake targeted assaults, the lighter and sometimes less accurate payloads carried by those drones may make it more difficult to cause significant damage to infrastructure particularly against more hardened target threat to Israeli infrastructure. While Hezbollah's drones and PGMs will undoubtedly target military objectives, they are also likely to attack civilian infrastructure in order to paralyze the Israeli state and society. 
potential targets can be deduced from Hezbollah's previous activity. For example, in 2022, Hezbollah threatened the Karish gas fields with drones. Some of its public pronouncements are also informative. For example, in a 2019 interview, Nasrallah emphasized central Israel, stating that a large proportion of the Israeli population resides in this area, as well as the majority of the Israeli government, military and air bases, oil refineries, power plants, shopping malls, seaports, airports, water desalination plants, and so on. In 2022, an Iranian media published an article describing Israel's target bank, which included various government structures, as well as nuclear and military sites. Earlier last year, Nasrallah specifically threatened Israel's civilian airports, military airports, air force bases, power plants, water plants, central communication centers, refineries, and the nuclear reactor in Dimona. Nasrallah has often threatened to strike ammonia storage sites in Israel, particularly near Haifa. Although Israel's largest ammonia tank at the time, located in the port of Haifa, was closed in 2017, owing to environmental and health issues, a huge ammonia facility is currently under construction in the city. Indeed, Haifa apparently has 1,500 aggregate risk areas and 800 types of dangerous chemicals. It is thus a target-rich environment with successful attacks on chemical companies and storage facilities, potentially deadly. Israel is also particularly vulnerable to attacks on its highly concentrated water desalination industry, which supplies up to 85 of the country's potable water. The great bulk of desalination happens at five plants, with ambitions to increase that number to seven. Missile or drone strikes on desalination plants might exacerbate Israel's water scarcity issues and, in the worst-case scenario, cause cascade consequences on the country's water infrastructure and agriculture, resulting in a health crisis. Another source of concern is the possibility of targeting Israeli energy sources, particularly petroleum imports, power plants, and natural gas infrastructure. Like most Israeli assets, the energy business is heavily concentrated around the shore. Attacking a few power plants may put the country's electric grid under significant strain. For example, neutralizing only the Rutenberg and Orat Rabin power facilities would deprive the country of almost one-third of its electricity production. Strikes against Israeli shipping channels and seaports might also have a significant impact on the Israeli economy. Most of Israel's crude oil imports flow through the port of Ashkelon in the south, with the vast bulk coming from Kurdistan until recently, Israel only has two oil refineries, one in the north and one in the south. A successful strike on the Ashkelon port, or the Bazan, or refineries would most likely devastate the country, which, although dramatically reducing its oil consumption over the last 40 years, nevertheless relies on oil for more than 40 of its energy needs. Air transportation in Israel is also centralized. Almost all of it travels via Ben Gurion Airport, which regularly sees more than 24 million travelers per year in non-pandemic years, whereas the next busiest airport can only handle 2 million, though it has seen significantly less traffic thus far. Hezbollah would have a more difficult transportation target in the Israeli highway system, which has a disproportionately high number of heavy traffic roads in central Israel. Several strategically staged strikes on a few vital roadways particularly at major interchanges, could significantly delay, if not halt, Israeli highway transportation. For example, in late 2021, the critical route one between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv was practically closed for hours after a truck collided with an overpass. A precision missile or drone strike may have comparable, if not larger, consequences. A successful bridge or tunnel attack, albeit difficult to execute, would have far-reaching consequences across multiple sectors. Any of these targets could be hit by a mix of Hezbollah PGMs, rockets, and drones. To overwhelm Israeli defenses, the party would most likely employ saturation tactics, utilizing its vast rocket arsenal to distract Israeli air defense systems. Using smart weapons to attack them would offer Hezbollah an advantage in terms of speed and precision. The latter is severely lacking in its unguided rockets, which are far more valuable for psychological than kinetic purposes. Because the group appears to have a limited amount of PGMs, it would most likely focus its PGMs on more susceptible targets such as desalination plants, ammonia storage facilities, 
and the energy sector, as well as a few targeted strikes on transportation targets to impede Israel's reaction. Israeli Countermeasures Israel has certain defenses in place to counter Hezbollah assaults. Of course, the most well-known aspect of Israel's air defense is the Iron Dome system, which intercepts short-range projectiles, but it is only one component. The David Sling and Arrow systems intercept medium and long-range rockets and missiles, respectively. Furthermore, the Israeli Navy has installed Sea Dome air defense systems on ships to protect them from aerial strikes. If Hezbollah launches an attack with its precision arsenal, Israel's whole air defense system will be tested like never before. While many analysts anticipated that the most efficient approach to get past Israeli air defenses would be to overwhelm the system with saturation strikes, Hamas's assault on October 7 demonstrated that this was an effective tactic. Because of these possible vulnerabilities, Israel may decide to hit Hezbollah rocket and missile installations first. However, Israel is unlikely to completely eliminate Hezbollah's counter-strike capabilities. Not least since Hezbollah appears to have greatly improved its air defenses in recent years, complicating Israeli Air Force incursions into Lebanese airspace. The recent display of Hezbollah's Therala anti-tank missile system indicates that the party is also looking to bolster its defenses against Israeli ground attacks. Hezbollah's air defenses, as well as the dispersion of its rocket and missile sites around the country, may thwart an Israeli attempt to demolish Hezbollah's precise capabilities. The greater the range, the farther north they may be stored. To eliminate the Hezbollah precision threat, Israel would most likely need to conduct both a coordinated air operation against Lebanon and a military invasion to completely destroy launch locations and manufacturing facilities. Whether launched by Israel or Hezbollah, such a battle might grow to encompass the United States, which has been attempting to warn Iran and Hezbollah not to become involved. If Hezbollah and Israel go to war, Hezbollah will most likely target not only Israeli military assets, but also civilian infrastructure in an attempt to cripple the country, putting its people under pressure and severely limiting the state's ability to respond. If successful, and that is a big if, because no one knows Hezbollah's exact capabilities or how Israeli defenses would hold up. This could potentially trigger massive energy, transportation, and health crises, potentially endangering the Israeli state's very survival and expanding the conflict to include other countries. That's all for today's video. Not only will the Israeli population suffer, but the Lebanese people's existing dire circumstances would worsen even more since Israel has promised that any battle with Hezbollah would be devastating. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.